this guy is not the guy you think he is. I wonder how many people actually think that I was born like this. It seems that some of you think that God has given me a special DNA to live by his holy standard in this day and age. And so honestly, I've just come here to set the record straight. That is not this guy, but it's that God. Because it appears to me that God is great at fooling people when I'm in their sight. Because the fact that some people think that I'm a good guy is completely because of his light. Let me explain. See, this guy was comfortable in his sin. And this story begins when I got rejected from my so-called friends as being a goody two-shoes. And so this guy took these two shoes and decided to move and walk towards evil just to prove that I wasn't lame. See, this guy had pride in my friends wasn't going to punk me, so I changed. But all I did was trade in my innocence for my prison chains. And so the cost of fit in required me to sign up for my custom shackles and prison clothes. And I walked straight into the prison cell and watched peer pressure as it pulled the door closed. But this guy was at least in good company, even after laying aside my teachings, because I could always pull off the position of part-time Christian. I would clock in on Sundays because mama made sure I, I was scheduled, but I wasn't available any other day of the week because it just cost too much to. And so again, this guy was comfortable in his sin because it was easier. Wrestling with myself just to be a people pleaser. See, that's where Satan gets you because he sure tricked me. He had me convinced that my friend's opinion should really matter to me. See, this guy was determined to be well-liked, so he opened his mind to what his friends were into, and since they loved them girls, this guy started to love them too. And at the time, not knowing a thing about love, but the R&B singers told me that if I said that word to these girls, it was only a matter of time before I got what I wanted to eat. And so again, this guy was comfortable in his sin because my flesh could feast. Because to me, I was surrounded by ease offering fruit from the forbidden tree. And even though God said flee sexual immorality, I looped hold my father's word just to fit me. And just to feel okay about overindulging in my flesh just sporadic sensations. This guy's Bible was called the, oh, you're only young once translation. So again, this guy was comfortable with watching sexy videos and staring at ladies' bodies as they walked by or finding alone time with women in secluded parking lots because to me, she was just a real abuse to pick my teeth after filling up on my lust. But to her, I was misunderstood for the rest of a ribcage, so she gave herself up, which led her to think that she had to do what she had to do to get me to love her, but not knowing then, I was taking advantage of one of God's daughters. I'm sorry. But see, conviction wasn't strong enough then. I mean, I feel bad for a few hours, but got around the fellows and I boast about my sin. And when they asked me about my date the previous night, I grinned because now this guy fits in. Up until one night, God met this sleeping sinner in his rest and his presence covered me. And as I slept, I was dreaming of judgment day and he was denying my entry. So I pleaded, but God, I'm a good person. I attended church regularly. I mean, didn't you see me? If I had only gotten a Bible verse or a cross tatted on me, that would have shown I was really committed. But with his mighty voice, he simply commanded, go away from me. I never knew you. But still acting on grace, he saw I was confused, so he proceeded to explain, since you didn't know me, you're not as good as you claim, because the ones that truly know me never remain the same. If you had really known me, you wouldn't have lived like you did because the ones who truly make my son their friends find it hard to stay in their sins. And since association brings about assimilation, you've proven to me by how you lived your life that you never really associated yourself with Christ. And so beyond all your works and actions being worldly justified, I still never knew you. So I hung my head and proceeded to walk away. But before he would let me awake, he whispered, but son, it's not too late. He pointed to a cross that was positioned between two thieves and said, Now it's your turn to die up there for me. And so all this guy takes credit for is making that decision to take the nails on that same rugged cross where Jesus Christ posted my bell. And as each nail entered my flesh, I could hear keys clinking as God was releasing me from myself and death. I said, God freed me from myself. 
and directly to my Savior's left, I became one of the thieves awaiting his death. And even though I was the one deserving to die, I still tried his promise of redemption. So I asked him, Jesus, will you remember me when you enter your kingdom? And my Savior looked up at me and said, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. So this guy took that invite and entered a fellowship with the king. So you can call it a holy matrimony with him. That's why I rocked this ring. Since I've been walking with Jesus, my taste for worldly things have started to diminish. I no longer value them just like Paul said in Philippians. I consider everything lost compared to the infinite value of knowing Christ. I swear I let the devil hold me to the world so long, convincing me that I was giving up so much for Christ. Until Jesus showed me the cost that he paid on the cross. So those things weren't even enough value to try to save my life. Which means I no longer worried about being taught how to dougie. No longer worried about money and fame so the world would love me. No longer felt the high urgency to get women to touch me. All considered worthless compared to knowing Christ. So this guy really can't take credit for his life. Because he lost it. And when he lost it, that opened up room for God to ramshack this guy's body. And in his heart, he took over because when God began to take rest somewhere, he always does a home makeover. He fixed leaks in places from years of being rejected and talked about, replaced doors of insecurities that my father broke when he ran out, exposed sin I had hidden in closets that I didn't want out. He tore down walls so every day is an open house. He had this wretched soul in a twist until I yelled, uncle. So now this guy carries the word tightly in his heart like a running back, no fumbles. Because God so loved the world that he gave up his son, so he was our first secret admirer. And as soon as I felt his love and grace and mercy, I was completely sold, no receipt required. See, this guy took faith in the word that said, come as you are. So I came broken and filthy. And after seeing how wicked I was, I laid my body in front of the father and said, work on me. So technically, I challenged him and said, if you really forgive all sin, then here's all of me. And after seeking his face for so long, the power from just his brow started to transform me. So if you still think I'm a good guy, then you're wrong. Don't elevate me and put me to the side of God's throne. I don't want to be a shade blocking God's son. I want him to get his shine on. This guy has done nothing but took up the cross, the same one he died on. And I listened in Romans when Jesus was quoted that one day every knee will bow. And even though it's uncomfortable, all this guy has done was decided to do it now.